Years ago, they used to do a test called the Tensilon test. Is that being done anymore? We do that test still. And uh, that's a very important test. And I need to tell you a little bit about acetylcholine to explain the test. But um, we talked about acetylcholine. It travels across from the nerve to the muscle. Now, there's a substance called acetylcholinesterase. It's a mouthful. But that breaks down the acetylcholine. So the acetylcholine doesn't just hang around in the neuromuscular junction. It gets released, it attaches to a receptor, and soon after it's broken down by acetylcholinesterase. Now, the tensilon, or edrophonium test, is injected intravenously. And what it's called, it's called an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, and say that five times fast. And that blocks the action of the acetylcholinesterase, which is supposed to break down the acetylcholine. Therefore, the acetylcholine stays around longer, and it can attach the receptor, come off, reattach again. It, and uh, it improves this neuromuscular transmission so process. It, so it so, shows an improvement, the key point? Right, an improvement. So what you see clinically, you inject the medication, and you watch something improve. This is very important. When you do the tensilon test, you have to have something you feel is objective enough that you can measure. So ideally, someone would have a droopy eyelid, you inject the uh, tensilon, and the eye opens up. Something you can really test objectively. Or the eyes are skewed, and you inject, and they're straight now. Um, many people, also, can, can any people have mycin gravis and the tensilon test doesn't really prove enough? Yes, that can happen. I've had patients with a negative tensilon test. Very often it happens with uh, people who don't have as much experience who, again, don't have that solid, objective finding that you can say for sure, yes, they definitely improved during this test. And I wanted to talk a little bit about one thing that I was taught uh, when I was a resident, something called the poor man's tensilon test. You don't have tensilon, you don't have an IV, and what you do is, because in myasthenia gravis, with rest of the muscle, the muscle strength improves. If you use the muscle, the, the muscle weakens. So uh, if a patient has droopy eyelid, then you can stress the system by making them look up, and that strains the muscle that makes the lid also uh, raise up the lid also. Um, so you raise, make them look up for about a minute and you see that the ptosis or the droopy eye gets worse. Then you leave the room, you turn the lights off, and you let them sleep and close their eyes for about five minutes. That's resting the muscle. You go back in and you see if the droopy eyelid's improved and then you go ahead again and stress the system and see the droopy eyelid get worse.